right, so I have the face of the head, uh, not the head, the block cleaned up. Uh, now I'm going to cover that with rags so nothing falls in there. What I did was to get all the material, all of the gasket material off. Went with a uh, putty knife and I had a vacuum hose at the other end. Putty knife here and then I had a vacuum right on the end of it. And it just slowly scraped little by little and that way I vacuumed up all the little particles. I was trying not to get them down into these channels here which contain coolant. Um, so that's done. Only bad news is uh, I got my head back and it's got some problems. The level was okay but uh, I'm going to have to get a new one. I think I'm going to have to wait 24, 48 hours to get it. So that's coming, but uh, I'm going to cover this up with towels. Then I'm going to clean the surface of the exhaust manifold here. Uh, so it's ready when the head gets here. And then we're going to change, if we can see here, the seals here for the intake manifold. They came in the head gasket kit, so we'll, we'll be hitting that next. Okay, to take out the intake manifold seals, it's real easy. Here's what they look like. Take a pick or a small screwdriver. Don't try not to damage the surface here on the uh, actual intake manifold. And you just pry out the seal and they come right out that's all it takes to get them out alright the book says uh, when you have this cleaned off, after I just took the seals off, I vacuumed out in here. I took a bristle brush, uh, plastic bristles, and I cleaned out all the junk in the little cavities here that had built up over time. Uh, and then suctioned out where my new rings are going to go. They suggest checking the head for warpage with a straight edge. Um, I would guess we do it the same way we did the cylinder head. We'll check across like this check up and down use a feeler gauge to see how much of a gap there is uh, but also our new rings these are very flat from where they've been sitting there and gotten hot and everything so uh, I don't think it's as huge an issue as with the with the cylinder head but uh, I'll check it anyway just to make sure that uh, part of our acceleration problem wasn't tied to this all right I'm gonna put the new seals in that's what they look like when they come it's got the obvious top that'll match this round so we'll just put it in there see the natural bend sits right in there and the rest work in with your finger see that easy I just did it one handed so I could hold the camera here's the next one the natural top let's see if we where's one that alright so we put it in there and just use our finger push it in goes in very easily if it's not going in you may have some some debris or something in there it, there's no need to to force it. it goes in pretty simple okay top and then look from the top you can see them sticking out now so they'll seal real good the other ones you can see just completely flat on one side where they you know sealed against the engine then it gets hot and of course the rubber's gonna 
the mold a little bit to the shape. Flatten out. Let's see. Use your finger. There we go. Simple as that. New seals on the intake manifold. All right, now we're going to replace the spark plug tube seals. Spark plug tube comes up through there. Here's how it is on the inside. These are very hard. They have a metal ring on the inside here. I don't like the way they recommend taking these out, but that's how you do it. You have to take a screwdriver and a hammer. And you want to bend that ring. See? Sorry, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see where I've indented that here. See? My screwdriver fits down in there. Then you're supposed to pry it out. I don't like doing that. So I'll pry against my screwdriver. I don't want to damage this surface. It feels like just composite, you know? So be careful when you're doing this. I use I don't use the biggest screwdriver. I got I use the next one down. Come from the angle side here. Break it away from the the plastic. There we go. So I pry my screwdriver in there, so I, I use it. There it goes. So here, this one you can see the see the metal ring in there. Right. Be the last one here. We'll clean that up and then uh, we'll put the new ones in. All right. Put a little bit of motor oil in the cap, rubbed it around the seal. Now, to put it in, you have to kind of hammer it in. I've got a leather belt doubled over underneath here because there's a lip on uh, the outside. And I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. So I take my dead blow hammer. It's got sand in it. And this is a socket. It's one and a quarter inch. And if you've got some type of pipe that'll fit in here, see, you want to sit this in here so that you're sitting on that metal ring. And then we've got to seat it. That's it. Sits right in there. So the first one I didn't have the leather belt down. It was on my work table. It chipped a little bit. So I put the leather. We'll do another one. See what you guys can see right here? Yeah. Okay. Take my oil. A little bit on the outside. I'm just using some 30 weight oil that I use on the lawn mowers. I'm not using uh, anything in particular. That's just what I had opened. All right. So now we put this here. Set our socket inside. And we want to hammer this level so it seats properly. So. it these are nice and pliable the ones I took out were very very hard they had no give to them as I tried to pry them out uh, the plastic was just peeling away 
and uh, not returning to form it. It was as I pulled it off wherever I left it. That's how the plastic was staying. It was pretty worn out. The car has 272,000 miles on it. Um, besides the computer change, I think the only other thing I've changed is the power steering before. So I think I'm doing better than most with the luck on the neon. Just need to give it some love. That side. There we go. And that is the new spark plug tube seals installed on the uh, 2001 Dodge Neon valve cover. That way we won't get oil down in our spark plug tubes anymore. That's awesome. Alright. Alright. Turned out I needed to get a new head because I had all kinds of valve problems. Once I got all the work done that needed to be done here, it would have come close to buying another head. So, uh, went ahead and got the new one. It's good to go. Only thing I got to do here, I have to take off my uh, camshaft uh, sprocket, I'll call it, because for the timing belt, we'll take that off and put it on there. We have the cam position sensor, which will go over here. We'll take that off. I just recently changed that, uh, so I know that's good. Then we have, I think, uh, I think this is a temperature sensor for the head. We'll take that one out, clean it off, put it in. And then also we have right here the tube that goes behind the thermostat for the cooling system. We'll change those out, clean them up, uh, and then the head will be ready to be installed on the car. First thing I'm going to do is this, and I'm just going to use a pipe wrench, uh, carefully back it out. Then I'm going to wire brush, clean the threads, and when I put it back in, I'm going to use some like plumber's putty compound just a little bit to help the, uh, the threads seal up real good. Actually, I'm going to take this out of here first. It'll be the last thing I put on there. Because this way the head can sit flat, otherwise i got to set it up on blocks so that I don't damage this. <laughs> 